Hello guys and welcome back today. We have a new chapter, we have a new video and we are looking into new amazing notes. So what are we going to be looking into today? We're going to start to look into Spline Bridge, Spline 2D Transform and Spline Render. Now if you go once again to your Spline uh, library, Spline Tools, you're going to see here you have different kind of Spline Bridges. The one I'm using is the one that has these lines, yes. Uh, I have, there's even a difference here that I don't know from where it came. I think it's something of the parameter I, I have touched before maybe. But yeah, the spline bridge is an amazing node. It allows us to combine two spline nodes, yes, into one and kind of like make like a generation or a new shape as you can see here and we can actually control it which is crazy it's so much crazy and as you can see it's following yes this spline we have created before and we're gonna be i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of show you how it works this way so first which are the splines we have first spline we have is a spline cubic yes this is the pretty much basic spline substance designer has give us <coughs> sorry for that so this is a two-point spline, it's just one thing only one only line, two vertices, that's all we're gonna have. And we can just move around the curve with uh, these tangents. So then we have the spline polyquadratic. This is the ones we, we have created in our last latest video. Yes, and we have a really good shape in this one, which I like. So we plug both of them, yes, all of their parameters, yes, into the inputs of our spline bridge. And what we get here, you're gonna have something different to this, yes? Uh, probably that's uh, that's gonna really happen. And that, the reason why is because you need to start playing with your parameters in order to get, yes, what you want. And you can actually see how procedural this is as we can make different shapes. And we're not talking about shapes, we're talking about a 2D image where we can build an actual 3D image. Like, you can see how this pattern starts here and it shows that it has depth. And this is just amazing guys this is really just so cool i love it uh, it just makes me remember from andre selenko uh, videos which are quite amazing and as you can see it has a lot of life a lot of shape we can really do a lot of things now unfortunately i won't be able to get into specific with you guys and tell you yeah you should do this to make um i don't know some scattering of rocks you should do this to no i can't Sorry, but I can't, and the reason why is because I haven't tried to test it into production yet. We are going to be testing in pretty soon the scatter on spline, but we haven't tried yet the scatter, the spline bridge, yes, as in production for myself. So we have a lot of these parameters, you know, quite like changing a lot. But I think that the real power of this node comes from the following. Once you have pretty much the shape you want, you can start playing with it by one clicking on any of your like previous spline nodes, yes, and you can actually move your overall. You can see it's it's just following. And there's something quite curious about it. Depending which one you use, meaning preview one or preview two, the result is gonna be completely different. I mean look at this. This is mind blowing guys. It is working to completely different levels and we can create a lot of things so as you can see i'm going to show you pretty much how it, this is working so i created two kind of splines as i said before a cubic and a polyquadratic and in order to make a major difference and see how it actually works i build them completely different so the first one the first spline is kind of a like a rect yes it has a little bit of shape as you can see here but that's it the second one, the second one has a lot of curves, so we are doing just kind of like a wrangle around it. And if we go to our spline bridge now and we choose the first node, yes, the spline cubic, the one that is erect, you can see that we can actually move our spline bridge result from the edges, from the start and end point of our shape, yes. So this one and the, the let's say the points are far away, they're controlling just the edges of our creation, yes, the starting and end points of our creation. 
while these ones control like as you can see just the curve of our spline controlling again once again the curve of our creation so we are moving the edges of everything we are transforming so let's see if i can show it to you in a better way so everything has a start yes the start is there this is the start so we're going into the start and this is the end no sorry and this is the end yes so it's using the start of the spline and the end of the other spline into just generating this and then it's doing the same with the other one so by doing this what we can actually do is just change as much as we want this spline so we are taking taking the combining two different splines into one to create more splines yes we are saying to our spline bridge in a more uh, let's say simple way i may be wrong but as far as i got this is how it, it's working i want a spline bridge that generates splines from this point to this point yes and i want to have these kinds of curves so that's pretty much what i'm doing right now so i'm telling the it, i want this one to be here this one to be here and it's all thanks to the spline i have created before as you can see and we can really make amazing things with this now i set it to a 0.5 what happens if I set this one to 4.5? Well, it just starts to change again. And we have, once again, yes, a big difference. In fact, let, let me try something for this. Look, look at this. I can keep on playing with this all day. Yeah, for, for sure. I, I have to tell you guys, I love this. I really, really, really love this. It's amazing. Now, if we wanted to move this part, maybe we should add a little bit extra points. Oh. <laughs> Counter-attack. It did not help that way. Okay. So, as you can see here, we have a really nice shape. So, let's move forward to the next node, which is Spline 2D Transform. So, Spline 2D Transform works exactly the same as a 2D Transform. Yeah, it's just pretty much the same, but I really recommend using it because it does help not to break the tiling of your material, as you can see here. Now, what we have finally here is just, oh, it's amazing. I love it, guys. It's the spline render. So, as you can see, yes, these nodes have outputs which are preview, spline coordinates, spline data, and spline amount. But we don't have an output from this. So spline render is gonna give us an output into our materials. But before we get into this, let's dig up a little more information because I really wanna give you the best for it. So for next video, we are gonna start with spline render and how we can use it in our materials. So I'll see you next chapter.